Hey, I'm Guy, and that's John. Yes, it is. Subscribe to the YouTube page. Leave a comment. Also, check the podcast below in the description. And check out geology.com slash ham for 40% off all trial sets and 20% off the new SPF 30 sunscreen. Keep yourself looking good. Geology.com slash ham. Adam Peters in The Athletic. And you told me, the was it the Eagles do like a blue star or something like that, they call it? The, the, the Ravens have always done, every scout gets a, maybe it was called a purple star for them. I think the Eagles call it a green star. Maybe it's a red star there too. I, I don't know. But you just star a guy who you just – it doesn't matter the round. A like, guy you a like. Type guy, a guy that you would just be or like – yeah, to me it would be a love. And it would be guys like DeForest Buckner, Debo – I mean it could be any round, like Fred Warner. You don't have to be a top ten pick. So it could be Fred Warner coming out in the draft. Like no matter what, no matter where this guy is, I want this guy on our team when the draft ends. So if that means we got to take him in the second, the fourth, it's not – you're not trying to like guess his round – you just go his on the field ability, his football character, everything this guy brings to the table. I want this guy. So apparently, the Niners. Adam Peters said the Niners have something like that called a gold helmet designation. Um, and I think Ozzy originally started it, and all these people now have kind of stolen. It's smart. The Niners had Trey Lance a gold helmet, and uh, Hufunga had a gold helmet. Telenoa Hufunga wouldn't be shocked if it was. John Lynch's gold helmet on that guy, right? Because uh, what did John Lynch call him? An old school badass. The Colts, yeah, the, some- and the way the team. I know the way the Ravens did it. Like the team doesn't. It's just individuals do it, right? So like an individual scout pounds the table. This guy's my gold helmet. This guy's my star guy. And it's like Middlecoff told me coming into this draft, his gold helmet guy was Landon Dickerson. He said, no matter what. I fucking would go to war every week right. with Landon Dick. That's not that's not you saying take him in the first round or take him in the second round. It's just um, I love this guy. Yeah. Um. So the Colts do something they call a blue card. Uh, football morning and Peter King wrote that Ballard said when we're in draft meetings we talk about an, a player's character at length, determine if he fits on our board. If a player meets our strict criteria in terms of his football character, he gets a blue card. We might have ten or twelve blue cards in the entire draft. And we want so it's to hard pick, to get. Yeah. And we want to pick as many of these players as we can. A Colts fan noticed that in a Colts video, a blurry version of the draft room showed that they had two players uh, taken in the first round were blue card players. So two of the players taken in the first round were blue card players. Trey Lance and Devontae Smith were the two blue card players that the Colts had on their board. So do you – Like, like I, Devont- Devontae Smith, every team, whatever their thing would would get that. We had talked a lot about him – you know, over the couple months, right? That every receiver, I had a team tell me that it, last year when Rugs and Judy were coming out, they said, "Who's the best guy in the room?" Both guys, without hesitation. You know, you ask the question, thinking like, "I was the best guy." It's kind of what you want to hear. Both guys, without hesitation, said Devonte, and like wow. he's the alpha on the team. Like, so that means they Landon, respect him in addition to him being really good. Yeah, I, I think Landon Dickerson and Devonte Smith are two Alabama guys that universally, like every team, whatever their designation is, got the blue card, got the gold helmet. Like that's just, it's hard. Like part of it, it should be, it should be really hard to get. Like you, you don't just liberally give them away. Two, two feels a little low, but you know. So what about the guy you, you guys like- drafted? <laughs> you hated him. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I, to me. He, this is you not said, th- wait. You, oh, you said so. The two guys, the the Ballard admit it or mi- Peter? No, just- no. Somebody noticed in the background of a draft video. You like try to blur stuff, but you can see some sometimes. You could just tell the order, maybe too, right? Yeah, that might. I think that actually might have been it. I think that's what they're saying. The blurry version of the draft board indicated two players in the first round were blue card players: Trey Lance and Devonte Smith. I the fact that you and I talked about this the other day because we talk about a lot of other things. Uh, and the Colts being one of them, we tend to talk about the Colts a lot because a Ballard, uh, the the Ballard loved one of your guys, is not the same as just any random GM loving one of your guys. I'd be like the Ravens loving one of your guys. I think same cat. I would put that in the same. At least when it was Ozzy, right? If Ozzy loved one of your guys, that would be the same to me. And we know well, they kind of like, they both love DeForest Buckner. Now everyone you could argue would love DeForest Buckner, but. I would bet there's some crossover in the players that Chris Ballard likes and the players that Kyle Shanahan and Adam Peters and John Lynch and those guys like. Yeah, and I think ideally, when you build a team, and we'll talk about like Curry, Draymond, and Clay, would clearly the NBA versions of them would be blue cards, right? 
you want your best players, like looking back at the Patriots, well, it'd be Brady would have been one, McCourty would have been one, you know, Edelman would have been one, like football, personal character. I mean, everything you'd want. Like, if your star players are get are that version, what else can go wrong? So it's like if your quarterback is one, ideally, doesn't get any better than that, right? So to them, their standards are really, really high. And I'd say the Colts standards, like you said, are higher than the Niners the last several years. <laughs> so consistently, I mean, with consistency it, at least. Well, well, they wouldn't Chris have drafted Ballard Ruben not, Foster. Well, and they they wouldn't have chose Eric Armstead over DeForest Buckner. And I'm not saying that was the wrong move, but Ballard would not have. He just he just wouldn't have. And we'll see how that ages. But yeah, I mean, I but I did, we kind of knew that, right? I mean, not we didn't know he was a blue star guy, but I'm just saying part of the reason of Trey Lance, one of his defining characteristics, is pretty consistently inside NFL buildings. This is why I think maybe you have said this before. We've kind of come to the agreement that, like, I bet Trey Lance was higher on the majority of boards than Justin Fields. And it's not necessarily a knock on Justin Fields. It's more like they viewed Trey Lance as just exactly how, like, there is not a negative. Yeah. Like, really, his only negative is the school he played at. Yeah, the lack of reps. The lack of reps. But the the only negative that anyone could have controlled is just, you know, we wish he played at another school. But if he had played played as many games as he could have. But this is where... You know, would you change it? I, because he didn't play at Oklahoma or Ohio State, I know something about Trey Lance that I wouldn't have known if he had. And the thing I know about Trey Lance is that he was more determined to be a quarterback, even if that meant going to North Dakota State, than playing at a big time school, which would give him maybe a more immediate spotlight, like Minnesota, who wanted him to be a defensive back, right? So I know. I know what Trey Lance thinks about being a quarterback, how much it means to him because of the fact that he's in North Dakota State. Now, maybe it would mean just as much to him if he had been somewhere else. I just might not know that about him. So I I do know something about him that I wouldn't have otherwise known because of where he ended up. And that, like, I know how he deals with adversity a little bit, right? I know how he deals with being told you're not good enough. There are these things that we know about Trey Lance that we wouldn't know if he was somewhere else. So I... I don't think it's even, and I know you're not saying it's a negative. I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want to. We'll see what happens over the next five, ten years. I wouldn't want to rewrite Trey Lance's story to this point because it's part of who he is. It's part of what helps us understand a little bit. I feel like we understand a little bit what he's about. Like to your point, that blue card is not about Trey Lance's arm, right? That's about the stuff I just said. That's about we've talked about this. I think the Niners believe this. I would imagine the Colts probably did. I think he's people think he's really, really, really smart, really sharp. Like that's that's what the that to me is what some of these the blue card and the blue gold helmets are about. It's about the fact that he was at North Dakota State. Well, if you ask Chris Ballard this, and if you ask anyone who does this in their draft room and said, if you could only have one of these guys on your team, what position would you want that guy to be on? I, all of them would say without hesitation they'd want their quarterback to be that guy. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. If you could only have one red star, blue gold helmet, blue blue label, whatever your designation is, you would take it at the quarterback position, right? Yeah. As a draft pick. Now, not some of these guys acquire quarterbacks different ways. I, that's a powerful thing. Like I was talking, uh, I was texting with uh, Keith Williams, who's now with the Ravens, as him and T. Martin are the wide receiver coaches. I was just asking about Bateman. He was like, Devontae hey, Adams, wide day. receiver coach. Keith. Yeah, he works with Tyreek Hill. He was at Fresno State in Nebraska for a while. And he was just telling me how much they love Lamar in that building, like how confident they just are about Lamar Jackson. I think one thing that's been clear with Lamar Jackson, you know, we can nitpick like his outside the numbers throwing. They just drafted a guy in the first round, and Keith was – they think they can get Hollywood going and everything. The character stuff with Lamar is like everything you'd sign up with, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's just – he he to me, he's blown me away. Because part of the quarterback is like, how do you act after losses? You act like a dick? You act like an asshole? Are you going to turn half your fan base off? You know, or are you just going to be consistent like or your every day? Room. Yeah, or your players? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, the Colts, like their, their riskiest move that Ballard's made by far is acquiring Carson Wentz, right? Somewhat out of desperation, but... Look, Lamar might be flawed, but at least you feel really good about everything you're doing with him 24-7, Right. And you just yeah, know we like we just got to put him in the best position in the playoffs, and 
it's easy to say what I've. What I think you and I agree. Like, if I were the Colts, I would have done this Carson Wentz thing ten out of ten times. So I'm all in. I think it's gonna work. But he did just get traded. <laughs> he just <laughs> traded him. Yeah. The Eagles just traded him. It's crazy. Because you say cra- any this team- off season may not. From me, I may not yeah, sometimes no. give this off season enough credit for how insane it is. No, we don't. It'd be very, very rare in the NFL if once you have a player and he's viewed as a blue star guy in your building and he's the quarterback, that guy never gets traded, right? What should we we should hand out? What should we call guys? I don't we, know. We, we give him a hand bone. And win. We give him a hand bone, <laughs> like a little helmet, uh, a little hel- a bone helmet sticker. You know, like Georgia what has if, the. What if we just? Uh, yeah, I don't a know. Blue collar. They get a blue collar. <laughs> Was that a Harbaugh thing? Remember the Dickies? Harbaugh had the thing where you had your your name tag on your your mechanic yeah, shirt. You wore, yeah. yeah, you wore a mechanic shirt. That's a pretty. That's a that's an old school. Like that will probably never happen again. Remember, guys would just wear it after a game. Like years. it wasn't even like the whole team. Someone <laughs> just be wearing their guy. Shirt. Jim would wear it. It's just yeah, like I remember Alex. Jim. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Harbaugh's was just Jim, right? <laughs> 